So let's get straight on into it, shall we? Last time I was live was on Monday and I did 10 phrasal verbs because we're going to take this a step at a time. And today we're going to do another 10. So let's get over there, shall we? So number 11 on the list is add up. But hang on a minute, didn't we have add up on the last le list? Yes, we did, it was there. So to add up is a mathematical total, of course. If you add up all the numbers, what number do you get? Um, but add up can also mean a satisfactory explanation for something. A satisfactory explanation. So does it make sense, basically? I could say to you, does it all add up? Does it all make sense? Is basically what I'm asking. And so the example sentence I've given here is, when questioned by the police, Jacob explained that he had been out driving his car all evening, but his story didn't add up. It didn't make sense because his girlfriend said that the car was being mended. If you're not familiar with the word mend, mend is another way of saying fix. So the car was being fixed, which would mean he couldn't have been driving his car all evening if the car was broken. So his story didn't add up. Okay, so that's quite an easy one. Um, what I'd like you to do, guys, as I'm going through these phrasal verbs, I want you to practice using them. So write a sentence. Patrons, write a sentence in the patron Skype room. And um, normal viewers on YouTube, just write in the comments box down below or at the side if you're with me live and I'll try and go through and correct them when I get a chance, okay? So the next one on the list here is add up to. Add up to. So if you're adding this extra word, then it means to have a certain result. What does it add up to? It adds up to 10. It adds up to this or that um, or a certain amount. So a certain result or a certain amount. So I've given examples of both here. When they counted the money, it did not add up to £1,500 like they had expected. It did not add up to £1,500 like they had expected. Unfortunately, their investigations and the statements from key witnesses just added up to more confusion. Just added up to more confuse, confusion. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what you guys are saying. Um, um, Mahandi says, hey ma'am, how is thing with you? You say, how are things? Not how is thing, how are things? Even if you're talking to one person, you say, how are you? How are things? And you could say, if you're talking to two, three, four or five people, how are things? How are things going? So you always use are when you're saying things. Um, things are okay. Like I said, I'm feeling a little bit unwell at the moment. I'm recovering from an infection, but I'm getting better. I've had my antibiotics, I've taken my tablets, I'm getting better. Um, okay, so let's have a look at your example sentences. The story Jane telling does not add up. And that's what um, Smika says. Let's have a look at this sentence together. So you, Samika has written, the story Jane telling does not add up. So how do we correct this sentence? Capital letter always, full stop at the end. And the story Jane is telling, we need that extra word in there. And then that's perfect. The story Jane is telling does not add up. Okay, what else do we have? Um, I'm just gonna add this one straight in here add up to, so who's written this? Red Brandy Cherries. Red Brandy Cherries has written this sentence. His money is adding up to one million dollars. Lucky him. Capital letter, full stop. His money is adding up to one million dollars. Good. That kind of works. It kind of works. It does feel a little odd because you can say, so it's, it's like cause you're using the continuous like it's still going on. His money is adding up to $1 million. So I think it would be better just to use his money 
adds up to like that rather than the continuous version his money adds up to one million dollars that would be better i feel okay are there any more i'll do one more correction and then we'll move on to the next one um so titania says i added up with my purchases i added up with my purchases hmm i'm trying to figure out which which version you're going with there so this is what you've written i added up with my purchases that doesn't make sense so i think it's the the order you've put things you could say my purchases add up so if you're um if you're saying that i i made a lot of purchases you could say whoo my purchases really do add up i didn't think i was buying a lot but when I sit down and look at everything I bought, I bought a lot. My purchases add up. Okay, that would make more sense. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on to the next one. And the next one on the list is agree with. Agree with. Now, obviously, you would have heard, um, I agree with you. I agree with him. I agree with what you're saying. I agree with the rules. I agree with the law. Um, but sometimes as a phrasal verb agree with is has a different meaning it can mean the effect so if so, normally we use this in the negative so normally we'd say it doesn't agree with me it didn't agree with me and we'd normally use this when talking about something that has a negative effect on us so for example if I drank a drink that makes me sick and maybe makes me have a rash or some sort of um, side effect, then I could say that drink does not agree with me. That drink has a negative effect on me. It does not agree with me. We can sometimes use it in the positive though. You could be like, um, go out into the sunshine, have a holiday, a sunny holiday, and you come back looking healthy and beautiful. And someone might say to you, oh, a holidays agree with you or the sunshine certainly agrees with you if someone is pregnant and they look beautiful because they they look blooming and beautiful when they're pregnant you can say wow being pregnant agrees with you it has a good effect on you but like i said more often we use agree with in this way in the negative and usually talking about food and drink so let's have a look at this written down so you can get it properly so it has an, it's about effect, it's usually used in the negative to show that something has had a negative effect, especially, um, sorry, that should be if, especially if it makes you feel bad. Okay, so the example sentence I've written here is, Deborah is not very well. The fish we ate last night didn't agree with her stomach. Or I could simply have put didn't agree with her. It, it made her sick. Or maybe it gave her diarrhea or something. Um, so let's have a look at your sentences. So Rodrigo, Rod, Rodrigo, sorry, your sentence just caught my eye. Rodrigo put beer agree me, but water kill me. Okay, let's correct this. Capital letter, always at the beginning of sentence. Beer agrees. And you have to use with because that's the phrasal verb. Agrees with, agrees with. Beer agrees with me, but water, and this should be S, kills me. Okay, and that would be a correct sentence. Very good. Um, let's have a look at Pape. Pape has written this sentence. Spending some time with pretty girls really agree with me. LOL. <laughs> um, okay, good, you did a capital letter. Spending some time with pretty girls really agrees with me it really agrees with me okay so we have to have an ed s on there um and then we have ranj ranj has written this sentence oh i just chopped off the a there anna new haircut agree with you so we need, sorry, full stop. So Anna, so you're talking to me. Let's have a comma there. Anna, 
Your new haircut agrees with you. Your new haircut agrees with you. Perfect. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, let's carry on onto the next one. Um, and patrons, you're very quiet. Is everything okay? Patrons, do, do join in and give me your example sentences so that I can correct you as well. Um, just so you know, patrons, you will be getting a copy of this book which will be an entire book once we finish this series. It's going to be very, very long, but all patrons will get a copy of this one um, and that will be available in the patron room once this series has completed. Okay, so, oh, um, and anyone who drops a super chat, anyone who drops a super chat, I'll be making a note of anyone who drops a super chat and you will all receive a copy of this entire list as well, okay? And this is a list that's got like, um, I, I've not all got all the way to the end yet, but it's like 150 phrasal verbs and example sentences. So you'll be getting one for any super chats that are dropped during any of these sessions. Okay, hey Ella, just joined in the Skype room. Great to have you with me. All right, let's have a look at the next sentence. The next phrasal verb is aimed at or aim at, and it means to target. It's quite easy to remember. And the example sentence I've given here is, was that comment aimed at me? Was that comment targeting me? Did you, did you mean that to come to me? Was it aimed at me? Um, very nice and easy. So you give me your examples of aim at, meaning to target. But we have another one on the list using aim at, and it means intend to achieve. What are you aiming at, in, what do you intend to achieve? And the example sentence I've given here is, the updated products are due out after the campaign launch, which is aiming at increasing sales and brand awareness. Which is aiming at increasing sales and brand awareness. So it's still quite similar to targeting, yeah? What is its goal? What is its target? Its target is to increase sales and brand awareness. So it kind of all works, okay? Um, okay, so any example sentences, put that in the um, comments box and I'll correct them. Okay, we've got one here from Shady. I'm just gonna pop, pop this over. Shady has written, the guy speaking over there, oh sorry, the guy's speaking over there, I think he is aiming at me. Um, if you mean the guy is, then that just needs a little apostrophe there so we know what you mean. Otherwise, you're saying the guy's plural. Oops. Ah, what's going on? The guy's plural. So I'm unsure on what you mean. If it's one person, the guy is speaking over there. The guy is speaking over there. I think he is aiming. I think he is aiming at me. I mean, that kind of works. It's a little bit odd, but it kind of works. The guy is speaking over there. I think he's aiming at me. Oh, I would want to say, I think he's aiming his words at me. But it's not incorrect. What you did first time was fine. Okay, just feels a little odd. As a native, it feels a little bit strange. Let's have a look at some others. Um, mm, mm, mm. I've got um, Gossia has written, is this phone was aim at me? Let's correct that first of all. Is this phone was aim at me? I don't actually know what you're trying to say with this sentence. Um, yeah, um, so maybe if someone's trying to sell something to you, if someone's trying to sell a phone to you, you say, is this phone is this phone advert or is this phone campaign? No, let's go with advert. Is this phone advert aimed at me? Question mark. That would make more sense, but I'm not sure what your in initial intention was for that sentence. Okay, here's a good one from Prem Kumar. Prem Kumar, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, said, I'm aiming at increasing my fluency level. Perfect, well done. Good, great sentence. Let's have a look at the Skype room. Steffi says, I don't always agree with what mum tells me, but I know she means well. Perfect. <laughs> and yes, that's the same here. I think we can all, we can all, um, we can all resonate with that. 
that sometimes our parents say things to us that we don't agree with, but we know that they have um, the best of intentions. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Allow for is the next one, allow for. If you allow for something, you include it in your plan or calculation. So you, um, you think about it, you give it, you give it space in your plan. I allow for it. Um, so the example sentence I've given here is, if we allow for a few toilet breaks and the bad weather, then I believe it will be a five hour journey. If we allow for a few toilet breaks and bad weather and the bad weather, then I believe it will be a five hour journey. Okay, so to allow for is to include something in your plan. So give me some examples for that one and let's move straight into the next one. Angle for, angle for. If you angle for something, it means you try to get something indirectly by hinting or suggesting. So you get try to get something indirectly by hinting or suggesting. Oh, here we go. She's been angling for a bike this Christmas, but I just can't afford it. She's been hinting, angling for a bike this Christmas, but I just can't afford it. So we all know that, don't we? When someone is kind of giving you hints that they want something for their birthday or for a special occasion. Oh, I love that necklace. I can't afford it myself, but that necklace would look lovely with these earrings. Oh, I, I really need my hair, having my hair done, but I can't afford it. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll get something for Christmas. So you're hinting and suggesting you're angling for something. Okay, let's have a look at your, your examples. Um, I have to allow for, this is Pravi, Pravazia, Prava, Pravazi, Pravazi, Pravazi. Let's have a look what you said. I have allowed for one hour lunch break to my employees. Hmm. Um, mm, now this doesn't quite work. And I'm trying to think about the best way to make it work. I have allowed for one hour lunch break to my employees. Um, okay, so. Oh no, it's all going wrong. Um, Okay, let's get rid of this. When, when considering the length of lunch break, my employees needed, I decided to allow for one hour. Mm, oh, it just feels weird. It all feels weird. When considering the length of lunch break for my employee, my, when considering the length of lunch break my employees need, is I decided to allow for a one hour, or um, I had to allow for the employees one hour lunch break when drawing up the sh weekly or daily even daily schedule okay because we're talking about a plan so in general what plan are we talking about the schedule and in that plan you allowed for what I had to allow for this while planning this. That makes more sense. I hope it does to you. Oh, English is hard. You know, I really, we have a phrase, we have a phrase which is hats off to you. Hats off to you. When you take your hat off to someone, it's a mark of respect, or it was in the old days. We don't really wear hats in the same way anymore. But in the old days, it would be hats off if you respect someone. So you just give a little tip of the hat, I respect you. Um, and so now we don't do it, but we do say hats off to you if we respect someone. And I would say right now, hats off to all of you for learning English and committing to learning English because I think it's really difficult. I'm English and you know, sometimes I even find it hard to explain this all. 
Um, okay, so we have angle four and allow four. We've got two more to go and the next one is a good one to remember and it's answer back. There's a big difference between answering someone and answering back. And to answer back is very rude. So it's to reply rudely to someone who has authority over you. Okay, so you don't want to answer back, but you do want to answer if someone has a question. And I've given this sentence. I was a naughty child, always answering my parents back and refusing to do as I was told. Tut, 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 naughty Anna. So did you ever answer your parents back? So do you remember that difference? That's quite an important one. Okay, and then we have answer four. If you answer for something, it means that you, um, you, if I answer for something, I'm accepting responsibility for a problem. If something has gone wrong and I answer for it, then I am saying it's my fault. I accept responsibility. So the example sentence I've given for this one is, who is going to answer for the damage caused to all the vehicles on our road during the carnival? Oh, there should be no space between that word and the full stop. So who is going to take responsibility for the damage caused to all the cars on our road during the carnival? Okay, so who's gonna answer for it? And then the very last one, again, answer for, and if you answer for someone, you are speaking on their behalf. He will answer for me. So I've put here, my mother will answer for me as she knows exactly how I feel about all of this. My mother will answer for me as she knows exactly how I feel about all of this. Okay, so Pape has given an example sentence and you gave an example sentence for answer back. Let's have a look at your example. You said, if I was your spouse, so if you don't know the word spouse, the word spouse means um, your partner, your husband or wife or your, um, your boyfriend, girlfriend, but it's normally husband or wife, someone you're married to. So if I was your spouse, I would never answer you back. <laughs> Good, I'm glad, because I would be very upset if you did answer me back and that should be a capital I. Always when talking about yourself, it should be a capital I, okay? Um, so San, Sanil Gupta, Sanil Gupta has also given an example for this one and you said, don't answer back to your teachers. The structure of this isn't quite right. It should be don't answer and then the object who, don't answer your teachers back. Yeah, don't answer your teachers back. So do bear that in mind, answer, object, and then back. Don't answer me back. Don't answer him back. Don't answer your teachers back. Okay. Um, okay, I've got another example sentence for one of the other ones. And it's for answer four. Oh, you got a sneak preview of the next week's one. Um, okay, my best friend answered for me when I was alone in a clash with office colleagues. I think you need another phrasal verb here, but I'll keep it on this one. But what you want is stood up for me, is what you want stood up, stood up for. But um, we'll go for this one. My friend answered for me when I, capital I, when I was alone in a clash with office colleagues. Um, so I would change this, I would change the sentence slightly to make it make sense with that particular phrasal verb. It should be stood up for me. My best friend stood up for me when I was alone in a clash with, a office colleague, with office colleagues. But when you're using answered for, because it suggests that you can't speak. You can't speak so someone else is speaking on your behalf or there's something you can't say. So I'd say my best friend answered for me when I was um, unable to communicate clearly during 
during a clash with office colleagues. That would make more sense. My best friend answered for me when I was unable to when I was unable to communicate clearly during a clash with office colleagues. Okay. All right, I'll do a couple more corrections. I've got Steffi here in the patron room. Steffi says, by answering her boss back, it cost her her job. Perfect. Yes, you got answering the object, her boss, back. It cost her her job. So she lost her job for, for being rude to her boss. Okay, um, a couple more examples here. Um, you will answer for all the problems. Yes, that's a good sentence. I always answer for my teacher back. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So this is pa Paulo. Let's go back to answer back here. Paulo has written this. I always answer my teacher back that I love her. Remember that to answer someone back is to be rude. And Paulo, I don't think you mean to be rude because you're saying, I love her. You're telling her I love her, um, so you don't need back. I This would be a completely different sentence, really. What you'd say is I always tell, or I always answer my teacher when she asks a question. I always answer my teacher, full stop. I always answer my teacher. I love her, and that would make more sense. Okay, I always answer my teacher, I love her. Um, answerable, yes, you can use the word answerable as well. I am answerable, answerable to this, um, me meaning I'm held responsible for. Let's have one more, and this is answer four down here. I always answers for him when he stumbles in anything, so I always answer you don't need a, an s i always answer for him when he stumbles in anything it's a little bit vague but that's fine i always answer for him when he stumbles in anything that's fine good okay guys i think you've got the hang of it so just to recap we looked at um to add up to make ha to make an explanation it adds up it, it makes sense so I hope everything in this lesson now adds up. I hope it all makes sense to you. We had adds up to. So if I, um, if I count how many people are here, it will all add up to a great community. It all adds up to a productive lesson, a certain result, or I can talk about an amount. It adds up to 181 viewers, okay? And then we have agree with. I've drank some of this drink during the lesson and I have to say it does agree with me, though usually it doesn't agree with me. Remembering that agree with is normally used in the negative. And this, this lesson was aimed at you guys. This lesson was aimed at helping you to improve your English. Okay, so aimed at as in targeted, and aimed at as in what does it tend to intend to achieve. It's targeted at you, it's intended to help you improve your English. So it's aimed at you and it's aimed at improving your English. Nice and easy. We then have allow for. So this lesson was supposed to be 15 minutes long, but I allowed for double that time because I knew that when I interact with my students, it takes more time. So I allowed for interaction. I had that in my plan. Um, to angle for something, to, so to, to try and get something indirectly, I angled for um, new subscribers because when people subscribe, it's a benefit to the whole community. It helps me and if you help me, then I can help you more. So I'm angling for, I'm not telling you directly to subscribe, I'm hinting and suggesting that you should subscribe if you're not already. Okay, so then we have answer back, remembering this is rude. To answer, fine. To answer back, not fine. So I never answer my mother back because I respect my mother and I love my mother. So I never answer her back. To answer for, to take responsibility for something. Um, 
I have to answer for... <laughs> oh, I can't think of an example now. Um, I'm answering for the high heating bill at the moment because it's very cold and I keep turning on the heating so I will answer for the very high heating bill that we will get at the end of the month so I can stay warm and healthy. And to answer for, as in to speak on someone's behalf, um, my invisible colleague, my, my bear, my bear right here can't speak right now, but I will answer for him. He is very happy to be here learning English with you. That's what he wants to say. I'm answering for him. Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a huge thank you to you for joining me. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons um, for being here and for your constant support. Um, I have lost a few patrons recently, but whether you are a current pat patron or an ex-patron, I just want to say all of your contributions have been invaluable incredibly helpful to help in this channel to grow and I thoroughly appreciate all of the commitment that you've shown to this community so thank you patrons you guys are awesome and I will continue to try and give you as much value for your contributions as I can of course I always give you notes and private messages and access to the Skype room and some of you are on my WhatsApp group um, so I'm, I'm always trying to think of new ways that I can benefit you so thank you and um, thank you to everyone who supports me, even if you're not a patron, but you support me by giving likes, views, by sharing my content, by doing translations. Some of you are constantly translating my videos and it's incredible. So thank you because you're not just helping me, you're helping so many people around the world. And that is a really exciting thing. So all my thank yous are done. I'm going to say goodbye. There will be another video here tomorrow for you at four o'clock. Otherwise I will be live again next week probably on Monday, but the best thing to do is follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I try my very best to announce exactly what days I'll be live. But always around four o'clock, I'm here. All right, guys, take care. Lots of love from London and stay warm, stay well. See you soon.